everything you think you know about this ferocious dinosaur is probably incorrect. But don't feel too bad. Hollywood's quest for drama probably led you astray. While it was indeed a vicious hunter, as blockbuster portrayals suggest, it was only about the size of a turkey and definitely did not hunt human-sized prey in packs. This was the Velociraptor. Hi, I'm Talia Loewe Mary, and you're watching Paleo Logic. Today, I'm here to ruin your childhood. And by that, I mean we're talking about the Velociraptor, a dinosaur you may think you know well because of the Jurassic Park franchise, but which is actually as misunderstood as it is famous. Velociraptor was a genus of two known species which stalked around Central and Eastern Asia back in the late Cretaceous, between 90 and 70 million years ago. Unlike in Jurassic Park, Velociraptors were actually pretty small. Most of their overall two meter length was thanks to their ridiculously long tails. They were only about half a meter tall, or the height of the world's biggest rodent, the capybara. For all that length, they would have been only about seven kilograms, or about the weight of a hefty shih tzu, and are often described as turkey-sized. The reason they were so light is because velociraptors are theropods, a group of dinosaurs that had hollow bones, much like today's birds, which are the last remaining members of this group. Theropod means beast-footed, and this moniker was well-earned due to the three large, sickle-like claws theropods sported on each bird-like foot. Unlike other theropods, the velociraptor walked with only two toes on the ground. The toe that donned the largest of the claws was held up in the air, likely to keep it razor sharp. We know this from fossilized tracks that only ever show evidence of two claws. These claws were previously thought to have been used for disemboweling prey, but we know now that velociraptors use their talons for stabbing and also clutching their prey like an eagle. Theropods ranged vastly in size, from the adorably named Microraptor, which was about the size of a crow, all the way up to the Big Papa, the six-ton Tyrannosaurus Rex. And yes, T-Rex had hollow bones too. Velociraptors were certainly a lot more bird-like than the lizard-like dinosaurs shown on film. Birds evolved from theropods, so it makes sense that Velociraptor would also have avian qualities. Most strikingly, Velociraptors were likely covered in feathers. Their forelimbs were too short for flying, but they resembled wings and even had quill knobs which anchored flight feathers to the bone. There are a few theories about why a flightless relative of birds like Velociraptor would need feathers at all. Some suggest that they were used in mating displays. Others speculate that they were used for covering their eggs while brooding. The most likely answer, however, is that they needed feathers for good old fashioned warmth. A recent study determined that some dinosaurs like theropods were probably warm blooded like modern birds rather than cold-blooded like lizards. This means that the Velociraptor would have needed its feathers to stay warm. Just like birds, Velociraptors had swivel-jointed wrists and hinged ankles. They even had wishbones, which adds a whole other layer to that turkey comparison. One thing the films got right was the fact that Velociraptors were fast, vicious carnivores. Their 25-centimeter-long skulls were full of sharp, serrated teeth. Those skulls would have held large olfactory bulbs, which would have given velociraptors a keen sense of smell, perfect for tracking down prey. Velociraptors were bipedal, had powerful muscles, and could take long strides, reaching speeds of almost 40 kilometers per hour. For comparison, the average human can run about 15 kilometers per hour. Unless you're Usain Bolt, in which case you may be faster than a Velociraptor, but only for 100 meters. The Velociraptor's meal of choice would have likely been small prey like reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and even other small dinosaurs. Definitely not human children hiding in a kitchen. Their fleet-footed hunting abilities are why they were named Velociraptor, 
which means quick plunderer in Latin. The first known velociraptor, Velociraptor mongoliensis, was found in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia in 1923 on an expedition of the American Museum of Natural History. The most famous fossil shows just how aggressive they were. Like the scene of a blockbuster movie, this fossil, aptly named Fighting Dinosaurs, shows a velociraptor locked in battle with the much heftier vegetarian dinosaur Protoceratops. Many theories have been floated about how these two dinosaurs were preserved for eternity in this epic struggle, including that they were buried by a sandstorm in quicksand or by a sand avalanche. So if the velociraptors in Jurassic Park weren't actually velociraptors, what were they really? As you may have heard, they were actually based on the velociraptor cousin, Deinonychus. Deinonychus anteropus was a much larger raptor dinosaur that lived in North America about 145 to 100 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. Like velociraptors, Deinonychus was also a manoraptor and theropod, part of the Dromaeosauridae family and likely also covered in feathers. But it was much larger, growing to more than three meters long and weighing over 70 kilograms, or about 10 times the weight of a velociraptor. We know the movie got velociraptors totally wrong, but did they at least get the behavior of Deinonychus right? Did they hunt in packs? Sorry, Hollywood, wrong again. A recent study examined the chemical composition of the teeth of younger and older Deinonychus anteropus and determined that they ate different things. Had they hunted in packs with the older Deinonychus hunting for and feeding the young, the chemical composition of their teeth would have been the same. So if Deinonychus was really the star of the film, why not just call it by its name? Well, Michael Crichton, the author of Jurassic Park, thought Velociraptors sounded more dramatic. But if people knew that Deinonychus literally means terrifying claw, they would have agreed that it was likely the more dramatic of the two. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for joining me on this journey through time. I'll see you later.